ability to talk to you, especially among so many distinctive speakers. Uh, I'm from, uh, I will be talking about nanoscale phase separation and pseudo gap in the whole dot hybrids from fluctuating bonds. So it's phonon mechanism. Um, I'm from Poznan University, but this work was done majorly in IFO when I was spending some time and now also collaboration. So this is IFO theory group, Maciej Levenstein as a head. But there is also Simon Wall uh, who was doing this ultra fast. His group is doing ultra-fast optical spectroscopy, uh, sometimes with coherent driving. Uh, we heard about these experiments on Monday. So uh, this is actually our motivation, because he does experiments in which he excites uh, by light uh, some modes. And frequently, these are phonon modes. So we were looking, are there any theories of the coupling of electronic structure uh, in cuprates to the phones? And there are also uh, Polish uh, collaborators, and especially uh, Rabin Czajlani, who's one of the main investigators. Um, so uh, I'm in a position of a devil advocate, because in many talks you heard that there are no phonon mechanisms for cube rates. Uh, and the two uh, most frequent arguments is the wrong symmetry, this S-wave, uh, from this, uh, from phonons and two weak electron phonon coupling. And this is true if you think in terms of uh, phonons in BCS uh, theory, because uh, this theory is about uh, electron polarizing uh, surrounding. This was started actually by Frilich, and uh, we have local electron density. I will go into details because this is true. We have local electron density, and it's coupled to the potential of the ions. Now you take equilibrium position and you expand with small deviation. And what you get, you get the typical electron phonon coupling, which is linear with the phonon operators. And uh, if the polarization is not too big, what you get is the uh, large polarons. So this cloud of uh, deformation is weak. You get large Cooper pairs. And when you have large Cooper pairs, you may somehow go into effective continuum limit. And then you see this is S-wave, of course. Um, but if you would consider stronger couplings or any other not so um, typical phonon interaction, you could have small polarons, small pairs, and then if you take lattice into account, you have a situation that you can have on site repulsion effectively, but inter site weak attraction. And then if you consider such an effective model, uh, then uh, this is possible to have different, because lattice somehow regularizes uh, pairing channels. And uh, D wave, well, yes. And if you have U, which is repulsive, uh, this actually will be singled out near the half filling against the S wave or whatever. So uh, these are old works in midfield, but um, they are, uh, midfield is not changing symmetry. So um, this is possible to have. Not S wave, but the D wave uh, from phonons, and this is not so exotic. The much bigger problem is two weak electron phonon coupling in cuprates. Uh, so we know that BCS can pr produce strong uh, electron phonon coupling, but it's special materials. And uh, the recent result is almost room temperature. Uh, but in cuprates, yes, it's right. Uh, this polarizing mechanism will not provide you strong enough electron phonon coupling to account for high TC superconductivity. Yet, this is not the only electron phonon interaction. And one of the examples is well-known Su schiffer hegger model. When you have a chain of uh, carbon atoms, in, uh, because this is polyacetylene, and then you have effective tight binding uh, approximation. And then you consider hopping from one to another is the overlap of the orbitals. So if you will now move one of the atoms, so here, hopping will be much larger, here hopping will be much weaker. If you want to account for this, you should write hopping with this frank condon uh, overlap term. And since here will be uh, increase, here decrease, it should be in the lowest expansion linear. If you will expand this with the small deviation, you get something like this. You have bare hopping and you have correction due to uh, distance between atoms which couples to hopping. And this is a famous sushi per model for polyacetylene leading to its uh, 
bond order phase. Now, if we think about copper oxygen planes, there are uh, similar things if you think about oxygen bonds. Because, uh, again, this is a um, time binding model, and the hopping from the uh, copper to copper goes to this orbital. And if one considers uh, perpendicular oscillations of such oxygen uh, bond, um, perpendicular to the bond, well, any now deviation should lead to increased distance and reduced hopping. So this frank condon term would be like this, would be squared in phonon operators, and uh, the effective <coughs> model expanded would be like this. And why this? Well, we see that actually the, the oxygen bonds um, do buckle in uh, several copper oxide plane materials. They are also uh, another um, experimental um, indications that these uh, bonds and their oscillations may be important for properties of cuprates. And uh, Nunes and Sui put it such a simple model. Uh, later they did uh, molecular, ab initio molecular dynamics calculations, which shown that indeed such a uh, mode and it's vibrating perpendicular to the bond, is leading to substantially uh, strong electron phonon coupling. Um, <coughs> but uh, here they didn't do only the, this hopping part, but also this uh, molecular dynamics revealed that you have to take actually charge on the bond. So it's a bond charge coupling to the square of uh, phonon uh, Displacement. So, if one thinks then about uh, some Migdal-Eliasberg uh, expansion, it would be different because uh, this term is not linear in phonons operators. Okay. To, to complement the model, uh, they put it. Uh, one needs to describe uh, the oscillations of the bond, and uh, since they already have a coupling to the, core, uh, to the square term. They need a quartic term to stabilize it because this is negative and uh, this, this, this Q is always positive or zero. So they have something like a double well structure. When you dope, this Q becomes less and less because it's a charge. So uh, this uh, double well structure is less and less pronounced. Uh, okay. And uh, within this model, they obtained several interesting results, but what is, was most interesting for us is that they were able to show some properties of the pseudogap phase, which is rare for phonon models. So there's a pseudogap regime, which is huge, and it's one of the biggest problems in, in, in phenomenology of the cuprates. And um, the two aspects are uh, well known and well already mentioned today. One is so-called Fermi arcs. So away from a pseudo gap regime into metallic, the Fermi surface is simply connected. When you go into the pseudo gap phase, uh, the Fermi surface starts to be disconnected. The Fermi arcs form, and when you go to the uh, D-wave superconductor, this reduces to the points, and this continuous transition of these uh, Fermi arcs. Uh, another feature, which was uh, revealed uh, slightly more than 10 years ago, is the C4 to C2 symmetry breaking. Because earlier there was discussion whenever uh, this is uh, indeed some phase or this is just some crossover region. Now we know that uh, there is a, a lot of experiments showing that actually C4 to C2 Symmetry, rotational symmetry breaking occurs in these materials. And uh, what's more, how, how this rotational symmetry is uh, obtained? Well, uh, the STM studies, we heard about them today, show that some uh, tunnelings through uh, these oxygen bonds are low and some are high. And you see that within around this uh, copper atom, this is rotational symmetry is broken. We can see that in this area, this uh, strong bond uh, put in this direction, but around uh, 
this area, the, the weak bones are put, put in that direction. So uh, one can also see that actually they are kind of nanoscale domains which are forming many times, I mean, not in all materials, but generally there's, there's additional nano separation in pseudogal phase. Uh, when you hear about this nano separation in pseudogal phase, the, the simplest theoretical explanations are usually uh, either external, so effect of doping impurities which introduce strange disorder. Uh, but this explanation may have some problems because, for example, if we take two different materials, the patterns are, well, relatively similar, whereas the dopants go into different places in the unit cell. So, as a general mechanism, maybe this, uh, this nano-separation is not ex entirely explained by disorder. So, the another possibility is, say, interesting, and the competing phases. But if you think about competing phases, so today we heard about the density wave accompanying per density wave. This accompanying phase is not competing because it's coexisting. But if we have competing phase, which should lead to nano phase separation, then the question is if it's competing, maybe it brings another energy scale, maybe it opens another gap. But we see the Fermi arcs through all the pseudo gap evolve continuously to the uh, Fermi surface of the superconductor, and there is no additional gap seen in the pseudo gap. So this explanation is not also has some problems. And uh, we found additional explanation in the model we are studying. It's intrinsic instability of driven by phonons. So how the, how the approach was uh, done in Newton's paper? Well, they studied superconductivity and they studied pseudogap. We focus on the pseudogap because from our point of view it's most interesting. And for the pseudogap, they don't need the dynamical effects of the phonon pairing. What they were considering is simply static bond order. Uh, so they decoupled this in a mean field manner, and this is uh, reasonable because we are talking about phonons and electrons. Phonons are much slower, so this is not like hardly for brutal uh, decoupling. Uh, this means that uh, some part of this Q will get uh, will get this average, and this will renormalize. Hoping, on the other hand. Uh, this, this term will renormalize the uh, phonon oscillators. And they assumed a homogeneous ansatz. So the bonds in x direction are uh, buckled differently than the bonds in y direction, with different strength. And uh, this is a surprisingly simple model, but as far as I know, they proposed this before these STM studies were known, because this first paper is 2007 and it's February, and the first paper I found about STM is 2007, March. So it's amazing that they proposed something which breaks C4 to C2 symmetry and on the oxygen bonds uh, before it was a hot topic. Uh, so, uh, this is interesting prediction. With it, what, what you get? Well, something very simple, because if you have this, and you have just this methane decoupling, and you have only then the rest of the um, electron Hamiltonian is hopping, what you have is simply Tx, not Ty, hopping model. And this is simply producing, yes, a Fermi surface without any Fermi arc, is simply connected. Now, they say they may be different domains. And when you overlap and you take dephasing into account, this should produce Fermi arcs. They even estimated what should be the length term of Fermi arcs and compared to put the experiment, but they have not shown definitively how the Fermi arcs are rebuilt for such a model. Okay, so this is where we started, and we wanted to consider uh, first other patterns because um, well, they proposed some order for pseudogap, but uh, if you have the general model, the various orders of the bonds are possible. And the only way to check which is the lowest energy is have to go to unrestricted mean field calculations. Um, the another thing we wanted to study is study of electron electron correlations because pseudogap phase extends to the strongly correlated regime and then the effects of the local interactions have to be taken. And we wanted explicitly. And what we found, 
So this is recreation of the restricted calculations. Okay, the, the continuous lines. And this is this uh, order which defines how much x and y, y bonds are different. But when we went to unrestricted calculations, we found that the system separates, and this is charge here plotted. So we have huge charge imbalance in the system. And actually, if you wait long enough, this is very slow dynamics in the self-consistent calculations, you will see that actually it will divide such that on the one hand you will have one blob, on the other another. And this is completely unphysical, it cannot be, because if this is macroscopic charge separation, any long-range Coulomb forces would not allow for that. So the model is intrinsically unstable, and if you look back, it can be seen even with these restricted calculations, because there's negative slope of the compressibility. It's negative because here we have doping and not uh, density, so, so going up means actually negative slope. Uh, so it's necessary to add Coulomb interactions in our model, which will stabilize the charge. And uh, then we did uh, exact diagonalization study. So this is U0, and you see large uh, uh, charge fluctuations on the sides and on the bonds. Large charge on the bonds, very low charge. No, uh, opposite, sorry. Large charge, very low charge, almost zero. Uh, now we added. Uh -huh how we do exact diagonalization for the free by field cluster, and uh, we treated electron-phonon interaction with a mean field way, but electron-electron interaction, Hubbard interaction, exactly. And uh, we've seen that when you introduce U, which is reasonable for cube rates, uh, these large fluctuations are, are contained, there is no problem anymore, but you have to work with it. And another thing is that you see that these bond patterns survive in spite of this uh, U of this uh, type already bringing us to the, to the region because this density, which is close to Huffinic, already bringing us to the region of the local moments. So the local moments formation of the electrons is not killing this electron phonon uh, state, which could be killed. And without phonons, of course, everything is homogeneous. Uh, now, uh, uh, now we have to deal with fluctuating bond model plus U, and this is very difficult, of course, because Hubbard U immediately is very difficult. Uh, we did hard fork approach, and what we see that this density for U0 is, of course, uh, macrophase separation, but when you go to the right range of U's, it is stabilized again, uh, now, the long-term dynamics doesn't show any more uh, phase separation, so it's kind of uh, nano-phase separation. There are some patches of the under density here. Uh, and, but <laughs> the problem is that now we don't see the pseudogap phase, because in the hartree fock approximation for such U, everything is killed for this density, uh, for this doping, everything is killed by hartree fock prediction for antiferromagnetism. hartree fock blows up antiferromagnetism. So we see actually large domains of antiferromagnetic order, not pseudogap. We could push our pseudogap calculations away from this antiferromagnetic uh, regime by cheating with the numbers. Uh, not too far, but then we see some linear ordering of the bonds. Because now it's the bonds. So a way of this, this should work. There's no macrophase separation, there's nanophase separation. But again, it was difficult here to study density doping dependence. So we took a radically simplifying approximation. We say, okay, the fluctuations in the charge, which are stabilized by U, uh, are coupled here. So let's, let's approximate it by its constant density and then lower U to the values which will not produce such big uh, antiferromagnetic calculations within Hartree fock uh, calculation, and this is much lower U. And with that, we call it residual interaction model because there are scattering of the electrons to the phonons, but not to directly to do so much charge, because we say the majority of the U stabilizes this discharge. And we leave the rest of the U, which is producing antiferromagnetic correlations, but within Hartree fock within the acceptable density regime. Okay, and these are results. Uh, 
this uh, pseudo gap like order is following similarly what we had in the before uh, for this uh, simple uh, uh, unstable model and we see a nano phase separation or maybe too regular but still we see a nano phase separation in the bonds and some bond order and this is intrinsic property of the interplay of the electron correlations or the stabilizing and phonons trying to introduce uh, nanoscale density. Fluctuations, what we see? We change uh, doping, so doping is now that direction, and we see this change. Uh, now here the order at this temperature is very weak, so we probably barely see the differences between bonds X and Y, but uh, they, uh, there is, and it's very weak, and there's one huge domain, so we reconstruct the Fermi surface. We see Fermi arcs. We see Fermi arcs, as we increase doping, they are enlarging. And finally, when the order dies, we go back to simply connected lattice uh, Fermi surface. And today we heard about this study, which did exactly study how these uh, things change with the doping. I'm not claiming this is the same, but uh, they see changes in the distribution of these domains and more importantly they see this closing of the Fermi surface. So this is what we get from the such a simple model. Uh, we also look for the temperature effects. So uh, this is doping O1 and we go from this temperature to higher temperatures and we see how the Fermi surface is closing again as it should and uh, the, the, the size of the domains is not changing now, it's only weak. So uh, we also look for the effects of no doping impurities because there was this question whenever they change something. And there are two important, the zinc, which was mentioned today, which is trying to, which is usually destroying both the pseudogap and the superconductivity, but pseudogap relatively weakly. And the nickel impurities, which have this amazing property that either destroys superconductive order, but slightly enhance pseudogap order. And this is a really strange how from impurities you can have enhance or pseudo uh, gap regime. So we calculated uh, a real part of the C-axis conductivity, which is typically done for that. Uh, so uh, this is for metal, this is for pure solution, which should goes down, it should go up, but we don't resolve it here. But what we say when we see uh, impurities, we see that this, this maximum is roughly maybe seen as the uh, energy scale of the pseudo gap, well, in case of zinc, is indeed in lower energies, and in case of nickel, is indeed in higher. How this is possible? Nickel is ferromagnetic. We don't have coupling to the ferromagnetism yet, but these local uh, anti-ferromagnetic correlations uh, brought by, by nickel, because it simply makes uh, local magnetic moment bigger and this somehow changes density around it. And we have a coupling because this is bond order, it's coupling of the indirect coupling of the density uh, of the charge to the uh, distribution of the bonds and it's sufficient to, to, to account for this effect. Although we work only with phonons and no magnetic correlations are taken as the mechanism. So to conclude, Due to internal instability, the bare fluctuating bond model uh, has to be complemented with Coulomb interactions. <laughs> then the whole problem becomes really difficult because one has electronic correlations and phonons. Luckily, in this model, the, the pseudo gap doesn't occur through electron, some intricate, <coughs> delicate correlations. It occurs through bonds and phonons, and the electron correlations just stabilize it. Uh, but there's interesting interplay, and our approximate calculations reveal Fermi arcs with proper evolution with doping and temperature. And now I would like to take the conservative approach and we say at the end something like that. Uh, usually, um, when you see some pneumatic order, there is a coupling to some phonons because uh, there are some structural changes in many Usually these phonons are thought as non-important because this structural change is very close to these other phases. Now, uh, 
incorporates this uh, pseudo gap phase, extends very far from superconductivity and very far from anti ferromagnetic uh, order uh, area. And maybe there, the oxygen uh, bond phonons do play some role. I don't say it's definitive, but they may provide, for example, mechanisms for uh, this domain uh, forming. And maybe this, indeed, the phonons uh, impact on pseudo gap phenomena of plates is not quite dead yet. With that, thank you very much for your attention. as well as other phonons, are of course strongly coupled to the charge density rate. Right? And there, yes. in that sense, they may also influence uh, some of the pseudo phenomena of technology. Right? Um, well, th this is mostly so that. But that doesn't mean that they're involved you know, in the in pairing. Of the yes, that's action. true. So, uh, <laughs> the original theory was also put forward for the pairing. Yeah. Now, I'm don't want to go into that direction because we have not recalculated that. We focus on the static. So this is static and because <laughs> here is an electron-electron conference. So what I wanted just to say is, uh, even if you don't believe in dynamic uh, pairing by phonons, the static things which you see in STM and static charges should couple to static phonon distortions. This is quite reasonable. Yeah. And then these phonons may play an important role in, in the extent of the space and in the internal instability leading to these domains. And oh, It's amazing that such a simple theory recreates something like Fermi arcs, yes? I don't say it's perfect, but... Other questions? Uh, yes. Yeah, at the beginning you said that you would uh, compare two experiments made uh, uh, <laughs> this is far reached. Uh, no, no, we, I didn't say it. we will compare. We want in the future. We wanted to look. <laughs> we wanted to first to look for the reasonable theory of the coupling. Is there any reasonable theory of the coupling between the electrons and phonons in cuprates, which may be important for these experiments? This is a long shot yet, because, well, even if you believe there is a coupling. <laughs> Then, uh, if you have transient superconductivity, it's somehow more uh, easy to be detected than transient pseudogap. How, how do you detect transient uh, on the short time scale of pseudogap? I have one question. Um, so, I I I must have kind of blinked, but the the the, uh, the Fermi surface, the bone Fermi surface, the pneumatic Fermi surface, um, that does not give one a gap, even if you make it heterogeneous. So what what, did, what was the origin of the gap? Or I didn't say if there is any gap in these calculations. But there is no the, gap. The, the arc. Um, so uh -huh. in, in so you have you have strong bonds and the weak bonds. Okay. And the, they don't form homogeneous solution as of they course. assume. Yes. For which Fermi surface would be uh, like this. But you have local domains, right, right, right. and they somehow average with the way yes. idea they believe. Yes. Uh -huh. So at the end, numerically, what you get is that, for example, for such patches, you get that. Right now, um, when when uh, when one measures Fermi arc mm -hmm. in a pseudo gap state with say arc has, right? Yes. Um, the Fermi arc is associated with. Away from the arc tip, there is actually a gap. It's not just that the Fermi surface, because it is being averaged over, looks like this. So I'm just no, the my gap, question I mean, is, the, okay, is there a gap? What, okay. Is there here, actually a spectroscopic gap? In the, here you the don't gap. have the uh, here you don't have the states. So there is a gap. So there is a gap. Okay. Because because when you here don't have the states. Right. That's just in the in the in, in the cut of the energy. So so yes. this is very familiar to me because 
um, my former student, Steve Kibelson, and I looked at mnemonic disorder. Yes. How that affects, you know, and yeah, people, this, so this is similar. It's the same, same thing, right? And we saw exactly the same kind of very surface, yes. but we didn't call that, you know, pseudo gap because there's no gap. We know there's no actual spectral gap. If you <sighs> if you look at the if you look at your your um, spectra that you calculate, well, there isn't an actual gap. This is what it looks like when you just look at the Fermi surface at zero energy. You just increase the scattering rate yeah. in those states. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's more it's more broadened. Out there it's more broadened. It's much more broadened. Because of because your disorder configuration like this mm -hmm. affects the so we call this um, cold spot because mm -hmm. the this kind of um, spatial um, fluctuation produces scatter that predominantly yes. scatters yes. out here and not much here. Yes. So out there, it's much more broadened. It's not sharp, but it's different from gap. If you look at the spectral function, it's different from what you see. In that so you say it's different spectral yeah, so because, because it's incoherent? Or yeah, because, yeah, because, because, because this scatters, this gives you some energy. That has the form factor. So you get a form factor self energy. And at this level, it looks, you know, it's very encouraging. And you know, we, we were also excited, but we understand how this is sort of, you know, form factor scatter, which is not, not the same thing as having spectral gap. So this is on this level, yes? Because yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if you yeah. believe yeah. there's a pairing due to this, you, you yeah. could get actually some coherent. Uh... Yeah, so we saw the same thing in that therapy. Microscopic was different, but um, the same mechanism, same thing. Yes? Uh, maybe a comment or, or maybe you have something to say. It's such a configuration of inhomogeneous uh, frozen, if I understand it correctly, mm -hmm. yes. phonons, uh, should significantly reduce the superfluid stiffness. And uh, it could be that this is wonderful as far as agreement with experiment is concerned, could also be that the inconsistency but it would be worthwhile studying it, right? Uh, so this, if, if, I mean, just should significantly suppress the stiffness because it looks like disorder sketching, basically, right? Yes. That's, that's yes. all there is. Yes. And we, we study super okay. stiffness. Any other questions? Now let's thank the speaker again. And